Hey guys, welcome back. So today I just want to make a quick video talking about some new iOS malware or a new kind of virus for jailbroken iOS devices. So it's quite an important thing and I thought I'd make a video on it because it's been going around the community for the last couple of days. And this is basically, um, it's all coming from a Reddit user who posted this post talking about how his device is on a botnet, meaning that someone basically has remote access or remote control of his device and they're using that to attack Sony. Now, this video is actually not really going to be talking about that specific malware, but I just thought I'd make a quick video explaining a little bit about how iOS malware works, why it's possible, and how you can protect yourself from it if you are a jailbroken iOS user. So a lot of people don't even realize that mobile devices can actually get malware as well as desktop devices, so normally you only really hear about viruses mostly on Windows, but it turns out that mobile devices can actually get this too. Now it's a lot more uncommon on these mobile devices because of the more limited attack surface, but it is possible, and especially for jailbroken devices where the security is actually lowered. So iOS devices are probably the most secure devices um, out there that you can get, but you do still get these forms of malware. Now this is specific, this video is specific to jailbroken devices. It's very, very unlikely that anyone is gonna use their exploits on attacking your personal device if it's unjailbroken because the valuability of these exploits is very high and they'd make a lot pro probably make a lot more profit from actually selling these on or doing something else with it rather than attacking your one device. So this will be focused on how to protect your jailbroken device from malware. So first of all, if you don't already know, our jailbroken iOS device does actually uh, remove some of the security features that are enforced by your iOS kernel. So to allow um, applications or unsigned applications and tweaks and stuff like that to run on your device, you need to have certain kernel pa uh, kernel patches put in place. So some of these include, first one, P icon has debugger. This is one of the common ones used in older jailbreaks. This basically disables a few checks. Then we have one called AMFI get out of my way. This basically disables Apple Mobile fire File Integrity, which is the kernel extension responsible for checking the code signature of applications and if this is disabled you basically can launch any application whether it's signed or not so on a regular device an unjailbroken one every app has to be uh, verified and code signed otherwise it will be crashed at launch so basically the app will just you'll tap on it and it will exit straight away uh, there's also one cs enforcement disable this allows unsigned code to be executed once again and there's also various other things such as allowing apps to run outside of the sandbox allowing apps to run with root privileges and if they can run with root privileges they can basically do anything to the system they want because they have full access to the device so those are some of the main things that get patched during an ios jailbreak meaning that once your device is jailbroken these security features are no longer in place so obviously this is very beneficial for you as the jailbreaker because it allows you to run tweaks and unsigned apps and normal and apps that you couldn't normally run on the device but it's also very beneficial to an attacker who's planning to hack a device because this will basically allow them to have a lot more access a lot more control of what they would be able to do than if the device was un jailbroken because for example uh, a lot of people have open ssh installed and if they do not change their default password which is set by as alpine on all devices by default then if you're on a public network in a coffee shop or something like that then anyone can basically connect to your device as a root user and do whatever they want so they could just do it to destroy a device or they could use it for more malicious purposes such as stealing information or passwords or anything like that. Also as the apps no longer require code signing to be run on the device, attackers can actually create any kind of malicious executable file and then find a way to install it on the device whether that's through a uh, Safari exploit or just for a regular Cydia package as sort of a side effect to the Cydia package if they add that in as well as the tweak. then. This can be run from any directory, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be like packages and application like normally required on a non jailbroken device. They can be run in a process in the background from any directory as a root user without you even knowing that it's there running and it could be stealing information, it could be capturing passwords, it could be doing a lot of malicious stuff that you don't want done on your device. So obviously it's still quite rare to be able to get infected by these kinds of malware on iOS and this new botnet malware is the first malware for iOS I've seen in a good few months so it's very unlikely you're going to get infected by anything like this but if you are concerned about it then here's a few things that you can do to protect yourself even further. So first of all when you jailbreak your device and when you install packages always make sure that you're installing packages from a trusted repo. Now the trusted repos are the default repos so when you first jailbreak your device and open up Cydia in the sources section you'll see about five or six repos installed by default 
And these are the trusted repos. These repos, such as Big Boss and ModMyI, they actually go through a similar process as the App Store does when verifying or taking in new tweaks to publish. So they actually go through a verification process where they're tested on devices and sort of scanned for any kind of unusual activity before being published for the public to download. So it's not as secure as the App Store's verification process, so malware could potentially still get through this, but it's a lot more secure than downloading tweaks and apps from a repo that you've never heard of before and that is not by someone trusted. So if you are worried about getting infected by some of these malwares, then I would stay away from any kind of piracy repo, any kind of third party repo from a developer you've never heard of, because even though these repos may contain packages that seem legitimate, such as a piracy repo may contain a paid package for free, it may also install malware along with it. And this is probably one of the techniques that attackers would use is they try to get you to install a tweak that you want for free, but along with installing that, they'll give you some kind of malicious code that's gonna run in the background as well. Another way you could potentially be attacked on your jailbroken device is through WebKit exploits in mobile Safari. So because when you're jailbroken, you're likely running an outdated version of iOS, uh, for example, iOS 10.2 is the latest publicly jailbreakable version, iOS 10.3.1 has a lot more patches for bugs and exploits than 10.2 does, meaning that your device is still actually vulnerable to these older, bat, uh, older bugs and exploits. So if someone has a WebKit exploit for iOS 10.2, you are still vulnerable to this, meaning if you visit a maliciously crafted web page, they could potentially install uh, any kind of software or files onto your device and attack you this way. So be careful when browsing um, shady websites or piracy websites, anything like that. These, these attackers will most likely target piracy pages or piracy repos because they know that a lot of people who don't know a lot about jailbreaking will try to download tweaks for free or apps for free from these Chinese piracy websites and they'll end up getting infected with whatever kind of malware these guys are going to put on your device. So if you think your device is already infected with malware or you just want to check to be safe then there's a couple of things you could do. First of all you can run the ps space aux command inside of mobile terminal or of ssh this will display a list of all the running processes on your device, including the background ones, meaning the ones you couldn't normally be able to see. And this will allow you to basically look through these names of these processes and see if you find anything suspicious. If you see anything you've never really seen before or you don't think should be there, then do a little bit of research into it, find out what it is. And it's most likely just going to be something that you've never heard of, but is actually meant to be there by iOS. Uh, the iPhone wiki has probably got a lot of good articles on things like that. But if you see anything suspicious and you find out that it is something dodgy, then you could take basically know what it is and find out how to remove it because this PS AUX command gives you the path that the executable has been uh, executed from. So you can just go and delete it basically. Um, other kinds of malware may be more um, clever than that and they probably won't show up in that sense. So you might not be able to find it by running this command. But uh, another thing you could do is download the system and security info app, which was developed by Ionic, a famous iOS jailbreaker. And this app will basically analyze your device and tell you various things about the security of the device. It will tell you which parts or which parts of the kernel are patched and what security features have been disabled in order for you to achieve your jailbreak. It will also show the running processes so you can find it that way as well. And it should show any other kind of suspicious activity on the device. So if you do find something there, then you can look into how to remove that as well. And finally, if you just want to keep your device safe and you're not really too fussed about jailbreaking after watching this video, then just restore your device and update to the latest version because it's going to be the most secure version of iOS. No um, public bugs, well there will be public bugs out, but there won't be as many public bugs for these versions of iOS that could actually hack your device. And since your device will not be jailbroken on the latest version, it will be a lot more unlikely you're going to get hacked anyway. So I'm not trying to do this video to scare you guys about jailbreaking because obviously it's still very safe and it's very, very unlikely you're going to get infected by anything like this. But when installing tweaks and apps, definitely a good thing to keep in mind these things I've gone over in the video. That's pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this botnet malware and if you guys have ever encountered any other kind of iOS malware or viruses and um, I'll have a look in the comments and reply to you guys. So that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.